Now, good morning, everybody. Today we got a paying job. These here are your top links off of a backhoe. And this is what you call lack of maintenance. Um, <clears throat> there's still enough good metal here. We're going to bore this out. And I had a sneaky suspicion that this was metric. And, uh, you know, if you put it on, you know, it comes out to uh, basically 40 millimeter. That's what it's supposed to be. If I um, use both hands and just pinch out here, it comes out pretty damn close. So it's probably supposed to be 40 millimeter inside the bushing. But anyway, um, of course, for me, being an American guy, and like in my normal stuff, I'm going to call it uh, 1575. Because if I want 2000s clearance, I got that in my head what 2000s clearance is. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do American, even though it is a metric system that it was originally designed on. Well, we got this piece of uh, two and a half, brand new. Um, I got a slab of piece off in it. I hate to use it, but. For ease of using it in the chuck, I'm going to cut a foot off and uh, put it in the chuck. And we're going to make bushings, then we're going to bore it out, weld the bushings in, and then we're going to bore it to size. So I'll bring you along as we do that. Hey, well, I got my old Kalamazoo. It's not much of a machine, but it works good. Didn't take too long. But that's how I'm getting cut off. Nothing fancy. No karate chops or nothing. It's just just getting cut. So while that's being cut here, I'm gonna do some grinding, and uh, I'm gonna put the camera away so I don't get shit all over the camera when I'm grinding it. I'll be back. Okay, everybody. I got this uh, ground off so it's not holding anything apart. It was all rust and stuff. I'm gonna line these up as best I can. Kind of split the difference on them. I'm not too worried about these holes because these are all different shapes on the end. You know, you can see there's quite a lot of difference here in variation. But we're close. I mean, you know, this here is the only good set of pinholes that were good on all of them. So I'm gonna take and clamp this. I'm gonna do it off camera. I'm just gonna put a clamp on it bring that together tight put about a half inch of bead on each one do the same on the other side over here do one down here and down here and that'll make me a solid block that I'm working with and then I'll put it in the milling machine and I'll bring you back when we do that hey well, everybody I got it all welded you know three little spot welds not much this uh, it's lined up good um, this side here has probably got eight or ten thousandths not much these down here, I mean, you know, if you only put it through one of them, if they're like, holy cow. And then these down here, it's like, you know, it's just plain bad. So that's what lack of grease does. It pays to give them a squirt every day, you know. Um, this here, at the end of it, um, I knew the back hole. It used to be pretty good, and I went by it one day, and they were using it, and the bottom pins in the main frame were about ready to come right out. I mean, they were just creaking and groaning, and I said, why haven't you guys been greasing it? And, you know, they always say, oh, yeah, I've been greasing it. Well, they hadn't been, or, if you know, if they had been greasing it, they let it go for like a year or so without greasing it, and then started greasing it. It don't really matter. It's lack of maintenance. No other way around it. That's not from age. My father's got one that's uh, 10 years old and saw all oh, 20 some years of being road commissioner. So it went summer and winter and he greased it and it's still in fine shape. So anyway, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm just getting ready to take the vise off. Um, I'll be about five minutes getting this set up and I'll bring you back.
I don't know what that weighs, but plenty to lift. And let's see here. Yeah, it never fails. Anyway, I'll be back. Well, we got this thing uh, pretty well straightened out. Pretty simple mount. We're not doing this last hole, so we can bolt right through it, which makes it real handy. I don't want to kill these too much, but I don't want to move either. So, that should be it. Now we'll put the boring head in. And I'm not going to uh, really indicate to the th to the thousands here anywhere. I'm going to indicate to this half radius because this is where the wear isn't. And this one here, I'll pretty much take it in the center, and I'll just do it by eye. And uh, we'll punch them both out the same dimension, and then we'll go to start cutting. The bushings. For me, it's a lot easier. I've done a lot of engine building, a lot of boring with boring bars, but I always like to turn in the outside dimensions to finish to fit a bore. To me, that's easier than making a bore fit the outside because I'd like to have like a half thousands or a thousands press fit. So, anyway, be with you in a few when I get that hooked up here, ready to bore. Well, I've got this down where I can just barely clear inside the hole. And it's probably, oh, 20 thousandths all the way around, pretty close. Close enough for that hole. I'm not even going to throw an indicator on it. And I'll bring you back in a minute when we get ready to bore. Well, we're just getting into it on the first trip. Well, things are going pretty good. This pass here should put us right at two inch. We're gonna to go to two and a quarter. So, that old steel is a little chattery when you go between the two layers. I don't know if there's some work hardness right out towards the edges or what, but it comes through it quick. So we're doing all right. I'm only taking uh, 50 to a cut. And that, whatever this here is set to is actual read of what you're going out in diameter so anyway it's going pretty good we'll uh, yeah we'll let it make this cut and then we'll bring you back here when we're getting done with this hole Adjustment out on this side, right there. I'll adjust it and we'll bring you back in a little while. Okay, well, as you can see, we got one hole done. It's good enough for weld. That's uh, two inch, two hundred thirty thousandths. So you can see here how when I aligned the actual plates, board this one true, the further one is true. This one here is off quite a lot. So these things aren't all. I'm sure the spacing of the holes is the same, but they're not really in line with the plates good. But by the time I get out to another quarter of an inch, I'll be all board true. And they'll be more accurate than they were when they were new. So anyway, 
We'll uh, talk to you in a second. Let me get this one done. Well, this here is what the bushing is going to be made out of. I went over in the drill selection I found an inch and a half drill. We've got to be uh, inch and five seventy-five. That's what the pin is, and this here is inch and a half, so I've got seventy-five thousandths to take out after I weld them in, which is fine by me. Shot, but it's it's big enough that if I probably frig with it freehand, I'll end up with it worse than what it is. And it's, it's doing all right. It's pushing a little hard, but it is boring the right diameter. It's actually three thousandths under inch and a half, so that's fine. making a lot of heat. Anyway, I'll bring you back. It's going to be a slow process.
Yeah, we're going good. That uh, tool cuts a lot better at 600 and some RPM. You get nice little blue seas off of it, but I'll tell you, they burn the crap out of you. If it hits you, so I'd just soon go a little slower, which I am. Okay. We're at 75, 85, 88. We're at 288. So we want to be at about 230. So basically, I'm going to take another 40 on this one. And then we'll kind of creep up on it. Close we're getting. So we're right at 250. Well, thousands last, but um, yeah, if I take about uh, fifteen should put me damn close to where I want to be. Try it right there and see what happens. Probably got a bird's nest on me, but you know it's given a best finish I've had yet, which is a good thing. Get out of the way before I get hot full of that. Should be real close. This is pretty hot too, so yeah, we're uh, 140. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, um, gotta go check my measurement. My bore is 230. So I've got to just take another 10 and I should be right there, just about a neutral fit. So I'm going to take a 9. Let's see, now that's going to, no, I don't want to do that because that's going to shrink like hell. Yeah, that's up around 200. Um, probably 180. I don't know. I'll see if the infrared will work on that where it's a silver. Well, I just mic'd this. You can handle it now. Been about 20 minutes. I cut all them plates apart. According to my calculations, we lost two we lost two thousands on this from cooling, so it's pretty hot. So I'm going to go down about seven thousandths, and I'm hoping that'll leave me about a thousandths and a half or a thousandths pressed. We'll see what it does. Not enough of a cut cut good. That sucks. But anyway, kind of half-assed expect that. Let's see where we're at, though, before we get ourselves committed. Yeah, thousands press fat. We're going to run with it. Damned ugly finish, but... If 
probably the press fit will go down as we get in closer to the chop and get less flat. But we're going to be real close. I'll be happy with it. I'll cut four rings off. And then I'll size it for the next four. Because four of them are at 230 and four of them at 225. So we'll just size them accordingly. Do the biggest ones first. Light cut, it seems like it's easier to get up. Good finish with high speed steel. Set that to zero so I know where I'm at. Alright, let's see how far off we are. Kind of a gnarly finish if ever there was one. But yeah, that's going to be just about perfect. We got, uh, according to my calculations, that's thousandths and a half press. So pretty damn close. So I can knock them in with a hammer. Um, yeah, just time to cut it off. I guess I am going to go ahead though, and I'll, before I cut it, I'm going to uh, metal prep this here a little bit. So. Yeah, I'm going to nibble away at it a little here on the lathe. I'll bring you back when I'm done. It's just foolish. Well, I just got done drilling the depth. You can still see some of the smoke rolling off. I went to a, uh, oh, what was that, an inch? No, 57 64 It happened to be a good sharp one. You know, and I pushed that through, which went real easy. And then as you can see, yeah, I ain't going to touch them because they're blue. They're pretty hot. Um, yeah, that thing melted through there once it had a bigger bore. So I guess it's worth taking the two-step process. But anyway, my bore's done. I've got to finish the outside to the smaller diameter. I've got uh, these all done, turned. They're all roughly metal prepped on the lathe. I just took a <laughs> tool and just crowded it. And just kind of did an ugly, you know, weld prep, I guess you'd call it. But anyway, I'm going to, uh, this is just straightforward turning and cutting. So I'll bring you back in when I'm ready to weld them in. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm not done yet. That's the first cut of the second batch. Phone rang. I went and answered the phone. My wife has already shut up the farm stand because... We are going to get that bad thunderstorm out there. So, anyway, um, I can hear the thunder and lightning. I just shut my stuff down. So, I'm going to go, and this is going to be the first half of this particular project, and I'll have the other half on the part two. I was going to do it all one, but if i got to stop anyway for an hour or so, um, I do have to finish it tonight, though, because I told them I'd be ready at 7.30 in the morning, so... Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed. Talk to you later.